And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What is going on everybody welcome back to another detroit lions video now the nfl draft is just a few weeks away at this point and with that being the case we have a lot of draft content to cover over the next month and that is exactly what we are going to be doing barring any signings barring any breaking news for the next month or so we are going to heavily focus on everything about the up and coming nfl draft different scenarios different prospects different mock drafts whatever you want to see is what we are going to do over the next month until the draft officially begins on april 20. Seven. And today we are going to start it off with one of the most important things going into the draft season, and that of course is the positions of need. What positions do the Lions need to address? What positions on the team need to be improved? And what picks can the Detroit Lions use in order to maximize the value of the NFL draft and put this team in the best position to succeed for? the near and long-term future. Well, today we are going to be going over all of that. We are going to be talking about the biggest positions of need, the players that fit the Lions the absolute best, and what positions the Detroit Lions should be targeting going into the NFL draft. So with that being said, and without any further ado, let's get right into talking about the Detroit Lions' biggest positions of need. Now, the Detroit Lions, before we get into it, obviously have gone through the free agency process. They didn't make a lot of big splashes, but they did make a cue a few key signings. I would say that the Mike Hughes signing kind of takes cornerback off the list. Cornerback was a position that was very, very heavily tested in the depth department a season ago with Okuda, Amani, AJ Parker, Jerry Jacobs, Ifiatu Malafanwu, all missing time a season ago. The Lions at points were down to their sixth, seventh, and eighth string cornerbacks, but with the Mike Hughes signing, it puts the Lions at about seven cornerbacks deep if you want to include Will Harris. So I do take that off the board and I'll Although the Lions have signed a wide receiver and a linebacker in this year's class, in this year's free agency class, I do still believe those are needs and I will be addressing those later in the video. But getting on to our first need of the day, and in my opinion, the biggest need of the Detroit Lions, that would be the safety position. Yes, a lot of people might say edge, a lot of people might say wide receiver or linebacker, but in my opinion, safety is the shallowest and the weakest position on the team, even with the re-signing of Tracy Walker. Now, a season ago, the Detroit Lions defense had three of their top six tacklers be from the safety position, with Tracy Walker leading the team in tackles, Will Harris coming in second, and Dean Marlowe being the sixth leading tackler on the season, right? The Detroit Lions did not have a lot of great coverage from their safety a season ago and you could say okay those tackles are because the defensive line doesn't get the stop that those tackles are because you know the linebackers can't cover and the safeties have to clean up a lot of those tackles in fact though were the fault of the safety right the safeties didn't cover very well the safeties give the big plays over the top and yeah they eventually cleaned up their own mess with the tackle but they still gave up a big play in the end of it right a lot of the line's biggest plays given up this season defensively were in large part due to the safeties in week one the long touchdown to Debo Samuel yes Jeff Okuda had good coverage and yes maybe Jeff Okuda should have made a play on the ball but Will Harris was in great position to make a play to limit the play to a 15 20 yard game Gain. Still a first down, still a negative play for the defense, but hold it to something that wasn't backbreaking. And yet he took a poor angle, took a poor angle of pursuit. Debo Samuel got around him and took it all the way to the house for a touchdown. In week three, Will Harris, or I believe it was maybe Bobby Price, on that last play, that last big play, that third and 19, where you are only defending, you know, the 50 yard line at that point. You can't let them pass that. And the safety cut underneath. The safety was caught too shallow. And Hollywood Brown and Lamar Jackson made a 
big play over the top in order to get in field goal range and eventually win that game, right? A game versus the Minnesota Vikings the first time around. There was 13 seconds left. And yes, you can blame Aaron Glenn for only sending three people, but at the end of the day, the safeties let up the middle of the field. At the end of the day, the safeties played not a great game and didn't finish the game very strongly, and they gave up the big play in order to give up that game losing field goal. And then you look at the Minnesota Vikings game that the Lions won, and there were still big plays, right? That 50-50 ball to Jamar Jefferson was the fault of the safety not being in the right position. And yes, that didn't go for a touchdown, but it changed the drive. It extended the drive and really changed the narrative of the game and really shifted momentum at that point in the football game. And I mean, you could just go over example, over example, over example of how these safeties were at times even in good positions and just failed to make the play because of the lack of coverage ability, right? Yes, they could tackle very well. That is something our safeties actually are pretty good at, but they need a coverage safety. And in my opinion, nobody fits that better than Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton is an elite coverage safety with a phenomenal range at that deep free safety position. But if the Lions end up passing on Kyle Hamilton, I do have a couple other guys. Verone McKinley III, the safety from the from the Oregon Ducks is a really good cover safety runs in the four fours had like 11 interceptions in college and just has a lot of production in that secondary and had a lot of production through the air for the Oregon Ducks and then JT Woods another big fast guy that just has a lot of range and forced a lot of turnovers and really eliminated the deep ball for that Baylor defense I think safety is a huge position of need and I think the Lions could not only address this position once but even twice this year in the NFL draft and honestly if the Lions walk away with Kyle Kyle Hamilton at two and JT Woods at, you know, whatever that fifth round pick is, honestly, I'm pretty happy with the safety room, right? Because then you're left with Kyle Hamilton, who's a great coverage safety. Tracy Walker can kind of fill more of a box role, which I think he would fit a little bit better anyway. Not necessarily a deep free safety, but somebody that is just covering over like more of the middle of the field, a guy that can step up and help in run support. Then you have JT Woods, the primary backup and that primary deep free safety backup. And you have Will Harris, who admittedly did make some significant strides a season ago and looked like a much better football player. Now, linebacker is, in my opinion, the second biggest need on this team. Because when looking at the linebacking core as of right now, the, it is not super impressive. Jared Davis is probably the most talented guy on that linebacking core. Alex Anzalone is returning as the captain, but he's more of a leader than necessarily a great football player. Derek Barnes showed a lot of flashes and I have high expectations for, but he is still a fourth round player going into just his second year after playing less than 35% of defensive snaps a season ago. And then Chris Board and Josh Woods and Anthony Pittman back up the rest of that linebacking core, couple good special teams players, but nothing really all that impressive. The Lions do have an opportunity to upgrade significantly at the linebacking position this offseason, having the opportunity to potentially get guys like N'Kobe Dean at 32, having the opportunity to get Damone Clark at 66, having the opportunity to get Channing Tindall or Brandon Smith with the, with the 97th overall pick, or if they want to wait a little later, they can pick up Penny Sewell's younger brother in probably the 5th or 6th round, who would also help upgrade the linebacker core from the University of Utah. There's a lot of opportunities up and down the draft board in order for the Lions to address this linebacker problem, and I would be surprised if they don't do so. I know they've addressed linebacker twice in free agency, but the position is still incredibly thin, and one injury leaves the Lions with very minimal depth. I think signing one, if not two safeties from this draft class, one being probably drafted, one maybe being from undrafted free agency or a late round flyer, makes a lot of sense for Detroit. And then the last group, the last position that I really wanted to talk about that I think the Lions need to address this draft season is the wide receiver position. Now, the Detroit Lions last year were very thin at wide receiver. Their projected wide receiver won in Tyrell Williams, injured himself on just the third play of the season, had three targets, two receptions for 14 yards, but did take a really bad hit from safety from 49er safety Jaquiski Tart that eventually, and unknowing to them at the time, ended his NFL season and possibly ended his NFL career. The Lions were then forced to rely on guys like Khalif Raymond, who was formerly a wide receiver five of the Tennessee Titans, a fourth round wide receiver in 
Amon Ross St. Brown, a former fifth round wide receiver in Quintus Cephas, who had never really stepped into a starting role before and not really ever had to be the number one guy before. And they had to rely on a lot of young and unproven talent to be the wide receiver core for this Detroit Lions team. And it really, really showed. Although Amon Ross St. Brown had a great rookie season, the Detroit Lions wide receiver core as a whole really, really struggled. There was no 1,000 yard wide receiver and there was only four receivers on the entire season to sub to surpass 200 receiving yards 200 receiving yards is three solid weeks of production four solid weeks of production in the nfl and the lions only had four receivers to do that quintez cephas khalif raymond amon ross st brown and and one other wide receiver whose name is currently escaping me but it is very very clear that even with the addition of dj chark the lions have a need at wide receiver it is very clear that the lions have a need at wide receiver now my number one player my number one target at wide receiver this offseason and for the nfl draft is Chris Olave. I think Chris Olave would slide in very well. I think he'd fit our system very well. Kind of fits the mantra of what Dan Campbell really likes in his wide receivers being, you know, fast, being a route runner, creating separation, and giving Jared Goff the biggest windows of opportunity possible in order to make the throw and to make the right read. I think Chris Olave fits this system better than any other wide receiver in this class, but if Chris Olave is gone like I expect him to be at the 32nd and 34th overall picks, I believe other good candidates include Traylon Burks, the wide receiver out of Arkansas, George Pickens, the wide receiver from Georgia, and of course, Christian Watson, the wide receiver from North Dakota State. But with that being said, that is the biggest positions of need the Lions need to target. And I know there's going to be people saying the edge rusher position needs help. We need to get pressure. We need to get sex. We need to do this and that and yada, yada, yada. Honestly, the Lions did not suffer from a lack of pass rush a season ago, right? Even while losing Romeo Aquara for large stretches, even while losing Trey Flowers for a large majority of the season, even with, you know, Julian Aquara not being healthy every week or Austin Bryant not being healthy every single week, the Lions had fairly solid production, right? I talk about the the, fans, the San Francisco 49er game this year earlier in the video, right? Talking about that big touchdown given up to Debo Samuel. The Lions got pressure. The Lions hit Jared, the Lions hit Jimmy Garoppolo on that play that went for a touchdown, but the safeties couldn't cover or couldn't knock that pass away even with the pressure, right? The pressure got there, Jimmy Garoppolo just threw it up because the safety wasn't in a position to make a play, right? You talk about that Baltimore game, they got pressure all game long. They pressured Lamar Jackson over and over and over again. And at the end of the day, when the game was on the line, they just threw the ball, they just threw the ball up to one of our safeties and our safety could not make the play. All season, the Lions had pressure. All season, the Lions put pressure on the quarterback. They got quarterback kids. They got quarterback pressures. They forced the throw early, but the safeties couldn't make the play on the football. And that's why I really don't think edge rusher is that big of a need. Now, I think the Lions could address it, but they definitely shouldn't be the first overall pick in this year's draft class, right? Charles Harris, a season ago, came is coming off a seven and a half sack season without playing all 17 games. And you just paid this guy $7 million a season to be on the field for you. Julian O'Quara in his first full season had five sacks in limited playing time. Austin Bryant had four and a half sacks in very limited playing time and really his first year of production. And Romeo O'Quara is coming back after averaging nearly four pressures a game in the four games that he played a season ago, right? He got injured very early on, but in the four games that he played, he had six pressures. He had four pressures a game, which was actually outproducing his career year from 2020, where he had 10 sacks, a ton of pressures, and a ton of quarterback hits, and was arguably one of the top edge rushers in the NFL. So you look at this, I don't think edge rusher is that big of a need. Edge rusher is definitely a position the Lions could address if they want to build depth, if they want to get an alpha pass rusher, I think it's still possible, but I wouldn't draft Kayvon Thibodeau. I wouldn't draft Aiden Hutchinson at number two, because the need just simply isn't there. We have at least three needs that are bigger than the edge rusher position. If you want to address edge rusher, you can get Drake Jackson at 34. You can get Boye Mafa at 34. You can get, you know, a really quality edge rusher at 34, 
while still addressing two of your top three needs with your first round pick, right? If the Lions go Kyle Hamilton, Chris Olave, and Boye Maffa is that first, second round pick for the Detroit Lions, they're still getting a top edge rusher, but they're addressing their top two needs before they address a need that is lower down on their rankings, right? If they go into Kobe Dean and, and Kyle Hamilton in the first round, they can still address edge rusher at 34. They can probably still address edge rusher at 66 if they really wanted to. But for the case of this video, edge rusher truly and simply is not that big or that significant of a need for the Detroit Lions. If the Lions want to target value and they want to target the best player available at every single pick and maximize on the positional value and maximize on the best player at their positions of need, the Detroit Lions will go safety, linebacker, and wide receiver with the first three picks of the NFL draft. But with all that being said, that is all for you guys today. Let me know down in the comments below what position do you think the Lions need to address the absolute most? What position do you think is the weakest and what position do you want to see the Lions address with the number two overall pick? I'd be very curious to what you guys think. But with all that being said, that is all for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching and until next time and as always, go Lions!